Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We will start the second video on the chapter on respiration. This is biology 5090 O level syllabus. And this is chapter 8 that we are dealing now. Uh, to prove that uh, exhaled air contains more carbon dioxide than inhaled air. So we have a mouthpiece. And what we have to understand is that the inhaled air is coming in through the outside here, dipping into the lime water and then it's going into the mouthpiece, right? Now, when the person exhales, then it goes in here, because this he has to close this pipe and this exhaled air goes in here and then it is out and it goes out. So this would be the inhaled air and this would be the exhaled air. Now you can see that the lime water in this tube will turn milky. Why? Because there's 4% carbon dioxide in exhaled air. Well, this one does not turn milky. Because it only has 0.04% uh, carbon dioxide. So the fact that the ex exhaled air contains more carbon dioxide, that is why this uh, lime water will turn milky on this side, which is the B side of the test tube, while on the A side of the A test tube will not turn milky because that is the inhaled air which is passing through the uh, lime water. Compare the oxygen content of inhaled and exhaled air. So we have two jars, one with exhaled air and one with inhaled air. And the fact that the handle burns longer in the jar of inhaled air proves that there's more oxygen in inhaled air as compared to exhaled air. The third experiment is to show that respiration produces water vapors. So you dry the surface of a mirror, breathe on to the mirror to produce a condensation. And you can test this with blue cobalt chloride paper. And the result is that the blue cobalt chloride paper will turn a pink color. So cobalt chloride is actually blue in color and it turns pink and you hold the cobalt chloride paper with the forceps the reason why is if you hold it with your hand your hand might have some moisture on it and that will change the color so water vapor is released during respiration and that when you breathe onto the cobalt chloride paper that is going to change color but if you just keep it in the room like that it is not going to change color so the fact that exhaled air contains more water vapors than inhaled air. Of course, the inhaled air also depends upon the environmental humidity, the weather at that time. So, but usually the exhaled air is saturated with water vapors. Now, let's come to the most important topic in this chapter, which is inhalation and exhalation or inhaling and exhaling. Inhaling means uh, taking in air, air is taken in, air is inhaled, air is exhaled, air is breathed out. Now, basically, the rib cage has to move upwards and outwards. So, when you're taking a deep breath in, the intercostal muscles contract, the external intercostal muscles contract and move the rib cage upwards and outwards. This, of course, increases the front back di diameter of the thorax. And the diaphragm contracts, the muscles at the edge of the diaphragm contract, and the diaphragm moves down. So what happens is there's an increase in the volume. So volume increases. When the volume increases, the pressure decreases. So when the pressure decreases, air moves in from high pressure to low pressure. So volume increases because the diaphragm moves down. So this volume increases as well and this volume increases as well because the rib cage moves upwards and outwards. So when the volume increases, the pressure decreases and the air moves in. Why? Because there's high pressure outside and there is low pressure inside the rib cage, inside the thorax. Inside the thorax, there's low pressure. So the air moves in from high pressure to low pressure. Now, when you exhale, it's the opposite. The diaphragm relaxes, so the diaphragm goes up again. And all of this goes back. The internal intercostal muscles contract and the rib cage moves backwards, inwards, down and inwards. So the volume decreases. When the volume decreases, the inside pressure increases. When the inside pressure increases, 
and this causes the air to move out of high pressure to low pressure. So inhaling and exhaling is mainly a question is mainly a question of uh, volume change. So a dead person does not breathe in and out. Why? Because the intercostal muscles are not working. So there is no change in the volume of the thorax taking place. Unless a volume change takes place, only then inhaling and exhaling is possible. And this is a very good comparison of uh, the inhale and exhale in the diaphragm contracts and moves down while the diaphragm relaxes and returns to the dome shape, rib cage elevates, rib cage returns to the original position, lungs expand following the diaphragm and the rib cage, the pressure inside the lung is now lower than the pressure outside, air gets pulled into the lungs, diaphragm pushes down on the abdominal contents and the abdomen expands. Now on the other side in exhalation, what happens is the diaphragm goes back and returns to the dome shaped position. Rib cage returns to the original position. The lungs shrink following the diaphragm and the rib cage. Why? Because the pressure inside the lungs is now higher. So air is going to move out of the respiratory tract. So diaphragm rises, releasing the pressure on the abdominal contents and the abdomen goes back in. Another diagram for you to do a comparison and have a look at it. Pause the video and just see if this diagram helps you better than the other diagram. So please try to understand and comprehend. Now we have to understand the gas exchange which takes place at the surface of the alveoli. Now as you know when we inhale and exhale, so air moves into the alveoli and then of course we exhale out. So the air is refreshed inside the alveoli at all times. Now when the blood is flowing which is low in oxygen, and high in carbon dioxide, the blood enters here. And these are capillary networks, which are all around the alveoli, and they're very close to it. So there's short diffusion distance. So the carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood into the, the blood from the blood into the exhaled air, and then it's going to be exhaled out. And these are the red blood cells. And the gases dissolve in the moist mucus lining first. And then oxygen is transported around the body by the red blood cells. Oxygen diffuses into the blood. And then, of course, these are the capillary walls, which you can see. And this is the alveolus wall. So capillary wall, alveolus wall. And blood is now low in carbon dioxide, but high in oxygen. So in the alveoli, what is going to happen is first the oxygen dissolves in the film of moisture and then diffuses into the blood and combines with the hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin, while the carbon dioxide, which is more in the deoxygenated blood reaching the lungs and the alveoli, is going to be, the carbon dioxide is going to be diffusing out into the alveolar space and then it's going to be exhaled out. This is a recap of what we did in a previous chapter, that we have the heart and you have the right atrium, which is here, and uh, this is the area which is the right atrium, and then this is the right ventricle. And then, of course, the vena cavas come into the right atrium, which is bringing deoxygenated blood from the entire body, from the upper part of the body and the lower part of the body. And then, of course, the pulmonary artery carries this blood to the lungs, which is the deoxygenated blood. And here in the lungs, of course, all the oxygenation is going to take place. And then it is going to come back through the pulmonary veins, and then that is going to reach the left atrium here, going into the left ventricle, and here comes out the biggest artery of the body, the aorta, and then the aorta carries it down, and of course it goes to the entire body, and then it is returned through the vena cavas. This is another diagram showing you the uh, bronchioles, bronchus, and then the alveoli, and then here you can see the pulmonary artery. Now artery, because it will have a smaller lumen, while the pulmonary vein will have a large lumen and a thin wall. So the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein will be easy to come in. You see a cross section of it. Here, of course, it doesn't show in the diagram. And then you have the alveoli, and then you have the alveolar air sacs, and then you have the capillary network and the bronchioles. So just to make you visualize it and imagine this whole diagram and how this is happening in your lungs at all times, even when you're sleeping. Another diagram showing you the bronchiole, the pulmonary arteriole, venules, the alveolus, the air sacs, the capillary network around the alveolus and the 
different bronchioles uh, which are going to then lead up to the alveoli. Another diagram showing you the uh, single alveolus and a whole bunch of them like a bunch of grapes and the deoxygenated blood and the oxygenated blood coming in. So you can understand how this is going to now return the uh, oxygenated blood back to the heart and then of course it's going to be pumped to the entire body. Uh, another diagram giving you a table of inspiration versus expiration or inhalation versus exhalation. The act of drawing air into the lungs, the act of drawing air from the lungs through the nose or the mouth. Inhalation, exhalation, this is an active process, this is a passive process. The diaphragm moves down by contracting and becoming flat. The diaphragm moves up by relaxing and becoming dome shaped. The external intermuscle muscles contract and the internal relax. The external muscles relax and the internal contract. The rib cage moves forward and outward by the action of the intercostal muscles. The rib cage moves downwards and inwards by the action of the intercostal muscles. The size of the chest cavity increases, the size decreases. Air pressure inside the lungs decreases due to the increase of volume in the chest cavity. Air pressure inside the lungs increases due to the decrease of volume in the chest cavity. Air moves into the lungs, air moves out of the lungs. Oxygen is taken into the lungs, carbon dioxide is removed from the lungs. Inspired is air is an oxygen nitrogen mix, expired air is a carbon dioxide nitrogen mix. So a very good table to see the differences between inhalation and exhalation. Once again, we look at the syllabus at the end of each chapter and then we go through all the points and see if we've gone through it and have we revised everything. If anything is left, we need to go through it again and think about it. And then, of course, we do the past paper questions, uh, the MCQs and the other questions. And that finishes this chapter. Thank you.